Hello and welcome to the Commander's Quarters. I'm your host, Mitch. Glad to have you here. Here at the Commander's Quarters, we're all about Commander on a budget. Today's episode is going to be a $50 deck tech. When I say $50, I mean that is an overall deck cost. Both shipping and commanders that are $10 or less are going to be included in that cost, but basic lands will not be. On this deck tech, I'm going to take you through its strategy, the tactics, and how this deck wins. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. And while you're at it, subscribe and review our podcast as well. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support. Today's episode comes to you courtesy of Liam, a Golden Pig tier patron who's been supporting this channel for over a year now. I truly couldn't do any of this without amazing patrons like Liam. And today, Liam's going to handle the intro for me. Hey Mitch, this is Liam from Peterborough, Ontario. For my deck tech, I'd like to see you build around Nethroy Apex of Death, focusing on getting creatures into the graveyard and taking advantage of them once they're there. Thanks so much and keep up the good work. So as Liam said, today's deck tech is going to be built around Nethroy Apex of Death with a focus around the graveyard. Nethroy is a 5-5 Cat Nightmare Beast with Death Touch and Lifelink that costs 2 white black green. Its mutate cost is 4 Slesnia black black and it says whenever this creature mutates, return any number of target creature cards with total power 10 or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. So the basic concept of the deck is this, we're going to build a ton of powerful creatures into our graveyard that have either 0 power or very low power and then we're going to reanimate them all with our commander. As always, I'm going to take you through 10 different tactics to show you how this deck works and how we're going to win with it. Let's start things off with tactic number 1, Mutation Preparation. First up, there's Wayfarer's Bobble, which we can pay 2 to tap and sacrifice to get a basic land and play tapped. Next up, we've got another great turn 1 play with Search for Tomorrow, which has to spend 2 for a green, and it says, Search your library for a basic land card, put it onto the battlefield, then shuffle your library. Then there's Rampant Growth, which can get us any base going to play tapped, and Far Seek, which can get us a Swamp or a Plains. Next up, we've got another great turn 2 play with Sakura Tribe Elder, which we can sacrifice to get any base going to play tapped. And then Fertilid comes into play with 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters on it, and by paying 1 in the green, we can remove one of those counters to search our library for a basic and put it into play tapped. Next up, there's Cultivate, which is going to get us 1 basic into play tapped and 1 into our hand. And then Harrow makes a sacrifice 1 land to get 2 basics into play untapped. And finally, Springbloom Druid does the exact same thing when it comes into play, except those basics come into play tapped. But we're not quite done with ramping just yet. So it's time for us to move on to tactic number 2, Dorks in My Yard. First up, there's Milken, which we can tap to put the top card of our library to our graveyard and add a colorless to our mana pool. And then Skull Prophet can tap for a black or a green, or can tap it to put the top two cards of our library into our graveyard. Both these Mandorks are fantastic in this deck because they can ramp us and mill us. But of course we're going to be running many more ways to get cards into our graveyard. Let's find out some of those ways in tactic number 3, Trash and Treasure. First up there's Ransack the Lab, which lets us look at the top three cards of our library, we get one of them into our hand and the rest go into our graveyard. And then there's Grapple the Pass, which is similar, it's going to make us mill three, and then we can return a creature card or a land card from our graveyard to our hand. Next up, there's State of Wayfinder, which has us reveal the top four cards of our library, and we get a land from among them into our hand, then we put the rest into our graveyard. And then Mulch says, reveal the top four cards of your library, put all land cards reveal this way into your hand, and the rest into your graveyard. And Winding Way is similar, but it lets us choose creature or land. Next up, there's Grizzly Salvage, which says, reveal the top five cards of your library, you may put a creature or land card from among them into your hand, put the rest into your graveyard. And finally, there's Moonlight Bargain, which says, look at the top five cards of your library. For each card, put that card into your graveyard unless you pay two life, then put the rest into your hand. So these cards are great at helping us dig for value and also helping us get a lot of cards into our graveyard. And again, the more creatures that we get into our graveyard with this deck, the better. But we're nowhere near done with milling just yet, so let's move on to tactic number four, a little off the top. First up, there's Wailing Ghoul, which when it comes into the battlefield, we put the top two cards of our library into our graveyard. Meyer Train does the exact same thing, except we also gain two life. And then Glowspore Shaman mills us for 3, and we can put a land card from our graveyard on top of our library. Next up, there's Gorging Vulture, which mills us for 4, and then we gain 1 life for each creature card put into our graveyard this way. And then when Return Reveler dies, each player is going to mill for 3. But some great repeatable mill effects from creatures come with Eye Collector, Nyx Weaver, and Undercity Informer. Eye Collector is flying, and when it deals combat damage to a player, each player mills 1. And then Nyx Weaver has at the beginning of your upkeep put the top 2 cards of your library into your graveyard. On top of that, we can pay 1 black green and exile it and return target card from our graveyard to our hand. And finally, there's Undercity Informer, which has pay 1, sacrifice a creature, target player reveals cards from the top of their library until they reveal a land card, then puts those cards into their graveyard. So this is a great sacrifice outlet for this deck, and it allows us to mill ourselves for a ton. But there's another way that some creatures can help us mill too, so let's move on to tactic number 5, Dread the Dredge. First up, we've got Shambling Shell and Greater Moss Dog, which have Dredge 3. 
Dredge 3 means if you would draw a card, instead you may put exactly three cards from the top of your library into your graveyard. If you do return this card from your graveyard to your hand, otherwise draw a card. So essentially with a card with Dredge in our graveyard, we can replace one of our draws by milling ourselves. The bigger that number is, the more cards that we mill. So Golgari Thug takes us a step further with Dredge 4. And then Stinkweed Imp goes further than that with Dredge 5. But of course, the biggest Dredge card in this deck is Golgari Grave Troll. It has Dredge 6, and when it comes into play, it enters the battlefield with a plus plus one counter on it for each creature card in our graveyard. On top of that, we can pay 1 to remove a plus plus one counter from it to regenerate it. So if we need a big threat, this can fit the bill, but we're usually just going to be milling ourselves for a ton with this. Now, I know that we've gone through a lot of mill tactics, but how about one more? So let's move on to tactic number 6, Into the Yard. First up, there's Grind Clock, which we can tap to put a charge counter on it, and then we can tap to mill a player for X, where X is the number of charge counters on Grind Clock. So the more counters that we can get on this, the more effective it can be throughout the game. Next up, there's Perpetual Timepiece, which we can tap to mill ourselves for 2, and we can pay 2 and exile it to shuffle any number of target cards from our graveyard into our library. So this is a great way to mill, and a way to prevent ourselves from losing from milling out. And finally, there's Crawling Sensation, which says at the beginning of your upkeep, you may mill too. And whenever one or more land cards are put into your graveyard from anywhere for the first time each turn, put a 1-1 green insect creature token onto the battlefield. With all the ways that we've got to mill with this deck, we can even mill on our opponent's turns as well to get a ton of tokens out of this. Now I said that we're done with milling, but we're not actually done with getting creatures into our graveyard, so let's move on to tactic number 7, Specific Selections. First up there's Corpse Connoisseur, which when it comes into play, we can search our library for a creature card and put into our graveyard then shuffle our library. And on top of that, it's got Unearth for 3 and a black, so we can get it back if we need to. But an even better way to get the right creatures into our graveyard comes with Buried Alive. It says, search your library for up to 3 creature cards, put them into your graveyard, then shuffle your library. This card is absolutely huge in this deck and get us 3 of our best creatures that we can then cheat out with our commander. But what are some of those powerful creatures? Let's find out in tactic number 8, Powerless. So we're going to best utilize Nethroy by taking advantage of creatures in our graveyard that have 0 power or nearly 0 power. The less power that our creatures have, the more creatures that we can get out of our graveyard. And again, if a creature has zero power like Scourge of Skull of Veil or Hero's Bane, it's essentially free for us to get out. Scourge of Skull of Veil is a 0-0, but it comes into play with 2 plus plus 1 counters on it, and it's got Trample. On top of that, we can tap it to sacrifice another creature and put a number of plus plus 1 counters on Scourge of Skull of Veil equal to the sacrificed creature's toughness. And then Hero's Bane comes into play with 4 plus plus 1 counters on it, and we can pay 2 green green to put X plus plus 1 counters on it where X is its power. Next up, there's Newscraft Mob, which comes into play with 5 plus plus 1 counters on it, and whenever a player casts a spell, we remove one of those counters, and we get a 2-2 black zombie creature token. And then Pentavis is somewhat similar, and also comes into play with 5 plus plus 1 counters on it. By paying 1, we can remove a counter to make a Pentavite, and we can pay 1 to sacrifice a Pentavite to get a counter back on Pentavis. With the right setup and the right cards in our hand, going wide can also be an effective strategy with this deck. But of course, going big helps as well, so we're going to be running Phantom Nishiba. It comes into play with 7 plus plus 1 counters on it, and it's got Trample, and when it deals damage, we gain that much life. And if damage would be dealt to it, we prevent that damage and remove a plus plus 1 counter from it. Next up, we've got 3 creatures that can be effective whether we cast them, or whether we bring them back. Embodiment of Agonies is a flying death touch creature that comes into play with a plus plus 1 counter on it for each different mana cost among non-land cards in our graveyard. And then both Undergrowth Scavenger and Drake Sound Forgotten come into play with X plus plus 1 counters on them, where X is the number of creature cards in all graveyards. Next up, there's Centaur Vine Crasher, which is similar, but it counts lands instead of creatures. And then Reverend Hunter comes into play with a number of plus plus one counters on it, equal to our devotion to green. Next up, we've got Realm Seekers, which comes into play with X plus plus one counters on it, where X is the total number of cards in all players' hands. And next up, we've got Custody Soul Binders and Stank Beetle, both of which pretty much do the exact same thing. They each come into play with X counters on them, where X is the number of other creatures on the battlefield. But on top of that, Custody Soul Binder can also turn its counters into tokens. But finally, we've got some creatures that can help our other creatures as well, with Gigantomancer, Champion of Lambholt, and Juniper Order Ranger. Gigantomancer has Fae 1, target creature you control has base power and toughness 7-7 seven, seven till end of turn. And then Champion of Lambholt has creatures with power less than Champion of Lambholt's power can't block creatures you control, and whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus plus one counter on Champion of Lambholt. And then Juniper Order Ranger is somewhat similar, it has whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus plus one counter on that creature and a plus plus one counter on Juniper Order Ranger. So this can get huge on top of making our other creatures even bigger as well. Now we've talked about our game plan, but how do we throw a wrench into our opponent's game plan? Let's find out in tactic number 9, Target Acquired. First up, we've got Reclamation Sage, which when it comes into play, we can destroy a target artifact or enchantment. And then Acidic Slime is similar, except it also has Death Touch, and it can destroy land. And finally, there's Crush Contraband, which has choose one or both, Exile Target Artifact or Exile Target Enchantment. But after we get set up, how do we finish out the game? Let's find out in our final tactic, tactic number 10, Death Awaits. First up, there's Odric Ludark Marshall, which can really help our creatures out in combat. It has at the beginning of each combat, creatures you control gain first strike until end of turn. If a creature you control has first strike, the same is true for flying, death touch, double strike, haste, hexproof, indestructible, lifelink, menace, reach, skulk, trample, and vigilance. So essentially, this is a great way to spread all of our keywords around, including our commanders. 
And then we've got some ways to pump our team with Overrun, Overwhelming Stampede, and Dragon Throne of Tarkir. Overrun is going to give all of our creatures plus 3 plus 3 and trample until end of turn. And then Overwhelming Stampede can be even bigger. It says, until end of turn, creatures you control gain trample and get plus X plus X, where X is the greatest power among creatures you control. And then Dragon Throne of Tarkir is essentially a repeatable version of this on an equipment. Next up, there's Brawn, which can do a ton of work just by being in our graveyard. Because if Brawn is in our graveyard and we control a forest, creatures we control have trample. And then there's Estimate of the Provinces, which has Emerge, and when you cast it, creatures you control got plus 2 plus 2 and gain trample until end of turn. So we should be able to easily cast this the turn after we reanimate all of our creatures, and then we can win from there. But a flexible spell that can help us out, though, is Dirge of Dread. It says all creatures gain fear until end of turn, and we can cycle it for 1 into black, and when we do, target creature gains fear until end of turn. Now, all these might be great ways to finish off our opponents, but one definitely stands above the rest, in my opinion. And that's going to be the golden pick of this deck, which is the number one card out of our 99. And the golden pick for this deck is Mogus's Marauder. It's a 2-2 human berserker that costs 2 and a black. When it enters the battlefield, up to X heart creatures gain intimidate and haste until end of turn, where X is our devotion to black. So when we use Nethbury to bring back our army, this lets a lot of them attack right away and with evasion. It can definitely take our opponents by surprise and help us win in one big turn, and that's why it's the golden pig. But now let's move on to the price breakdown to see how our deck stacks up. The average Nethroy EDH rack deck is going to set you back $483.82. Our deck is going to be much more affordable, coming in at $49.93. If you want to see a breakdown of this deck's cost, check out the link in the description. But with any kind of a budget deck, there's always ways that we can improve on it, so now let's move on to some reasonable upgrades. First up, let's add in Citrus Supplier by taking out Greater Moss Dog. Next up, let's add in Alter of Dementia by taking out Moonlight Bargain. And then let's add in Greater Good by taking out Grind Clock. Next up, let's add in Pathbreaker Ibex by taking out Overrun. And then let's add in Unrealm Lich by taking out Grapple of the Past. Finally, let's add in World Shaper by taking out Ransack the Lab. And with that, this show is coming to a close, so it's my turn to hear from you, so let me know what your thoughts on this deck tech are in the comments below. And make sure you're following us on social media for more updates and sneak peeks on future episodes. Again, a huge thank you to my patrons who helped make this show possible. I truly couldn't do any of this without your support. If you want to support this channel directly, consider becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, including being able to vote on future commanders for deck tax. There are even tiers where you get your own personalized deck tech dedicated to you. You can check out all the Patreon tiers and rewards at patreon.com slash commanders quarters. If you haven't already, make sure that you like and subscribe to the channel. Here at the Commander's Quarters, we're all about budget commander. So while you're at it, go ahead and check out some of our other types of episodes. And with that, I'm out of here. Thanks again and have a good one.